Hey there, my name is Lucky Bud, and I'm really excited to show you this image I took of Comet C2022E3ZTF. Yes, I am in Canada, so it's Z, not Z. I took this on the evening of January 21st, 2023, and it took me a little while to figure out how to process it with nice round stars, and I'm going to show you how I did that today. The tools that I used were Astro Pixel Processor, uh, Starnet++, and Photoshop. So let me show you how I did it. Let's start with uh, Astro Pixel Processor. So uh, the thing that you need to do is you need to process the image twice, once for the star layer and once for the comet layer. And while I load my images, I wanna tell you that I um, took this image using, here I can turn this off, uh, using my uh, eight inch Edge HD on an Altaz Evolution mount using a Hyperstar, a UV IR filter, and a uh, ZWO294MC Pro. And uh, I was able to get 45 minutes of data um, before the clouds came in. So uh, that's what I'm dealing with here. So I'm just gonna uh, load my flats and my darks. And so, yeah, what we're gonna do here, I will walk you through it. Uh, is process the image twice. So the first thing we wanna do is process the star layer. Once we process the star layer, we're gonna end up with really nice sharp stars and a blurry comet. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna process the comet layer, which will have really blurry stars, but a really sharp comet. And the key is processing the comet so that we have as few stars and star trails as possible. So let's begin. I'm just gonna do a regular integration with no changes or anything. It's gonna leave all these things totally the same. And I'm going to process this as stars. And I will come back to you in a little bit once it has finished its integration. Okay, welcome back. That uh, took a little while, but here we are. And as you can see, this is my image of the star layer. And I've got some nice, bright, nice stars, as you can see, they're all pretty round, but my comet itself is blurry. Uh, so the only thing that I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to use the remove light pollution tool. So it's in tools under remove light pollution. And I'm just going to do some really general for the sake of this little tutorial on how I did it. Uh, removal. I know people get a lot more meticulous about this than I do. But pretty much what I do is I just draw boxes around the places where the comet isn't. Uh, and then I hit calculate. And once that is done, we should have a pretty decent image to work with. So it's just gonna do that little process right now. Hopefully it also doesn't take too long for you. Okay, there we go. We have a nice dark star field there with a blurry comet and I'm just gonna click on okay and save. And I'm gonna save it as stars LPC. Okay, that's the light pollution filter. And, oh, there's that very loud gong. Uh, I'm going to uh, stretch it to about uh, to this one because I like it. The strongest 15%. And I'm gonna save it as a TIFF file. And there it is, and I'm just gonna call it stars. and I'm gonna save it to my folder. And once it is saved to the folder, I'm gonna run it through a program called Starnet++, which is actually on my PC. This I'm doing this on a Mac, and I'm gonna send it over there and run it. So at the very end, I'm gonna have a this image of the star field and a starless image of the star field in which this will just be blurry. Once that's all done, we're gonna go back to our original stack here and we're going to go for the second part of this which is registering the comet so how we're going to do that is you go into your register tool and you move down uh till you get to registration mode and you set it to comet one star and you start your registration and it's going to run this until it asks you some questions as it goes through the whole calibrate thing again, and it's gonna ask some questions. So I'll fast forward to when it actually asks those questions and walk you through it. Okay, we're back. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna ask you if you wanna use time shot metadata and you say yes. 
and it's going to keep doing its thing here as it starts to register. And in a couple of minutes, it's going to ask you another question, which is where is the nucleus of the comet so that it can stack it with the comet in perfect alignment. There it is. So I am going to click on the nucleus and then it's going to do is it's going to zoom in for me. So it sees it. And if I click away from it, it's actually still going to find the nucleus. So it's found the nucleus and I just go confirm and it's gonna apply that to every single image. You can see it's already now applied it to frame two. It may ask you one or two times to do it again. Uh, let's check on it when this process is done. Okay, we are on the final of my 119 frames of 20 seconds each. And once again, it's asking for the comet nucleus. So we got the comet nucleus, it's right there. I'm just gonna click on confirm. It's gonna finish its registration and it's done now. The next thing we need to do is we need to uh, integrate the images. Now, if we just leave all the settings exactly as they are, we're gonna end up with a really, really nice image of the comet that looks like this with really long star trails. Now, I'm really happy with this image. It looks really great, but the point of what we're trying to do today is get rid of those star trails and have a nice, beautiful image of the comet with the sharp star trail. So what you need to do is you need to go into the integration tab and you need to change integrate here to average. And we need to go down and click on uh, local normalization uh, rejection after we set this to mad rejection. And now that we're in the mad rejection, you wanna set your kappa. This is what I did anyway, and it works for me. You can play with these settings to low uh, and you wanna set it to eight, but the kappa high, we want it to clip those stars. So. Uh, you can try it with a few different settings. You can go as low as one, but you might find that your comet itself, the comet data is a little bit light. So for the sake of just this exercise, we're gonna set it to 1.5. This is how we're gonna get our beautiful stars. So once it's done doing all that, you don't need to change anything else. We're just gonna go to integrate and we're gonna call it comet, if it'll let me, comet with outlier eight, to 1.5 so that we know and maybe we'll put in mad because that was the name of the um, integration that we did and uh, yeah we'll click OK and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done okay here we are and we have loaded our image into the light pollution filter one more time and it looks like this so we have a lot of good data on the comet itself it's pretty sharp but as you can see there's only a couple of stars so once again I'm gonna do my little light pollution filter um, and just draw these boxes kind of around where the comet is uh, sometimes on my Mac when it draws these it cuts off the top of the box but uh, you get the basic idea just drawing a, a few boxes around where the comet is not and we will click on calculate and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done Okay, here we are, and we have a pretty nice image. So you can see the comet came through pretty nicely, so I'm gonna click OK and save. And there it is. I'm gonna save it as a TIFF file. And so we are gonna end up now with three TIFF files. We're gonna end up with the, I'm just gonna cut that off there. Uh, we are gonna end up with the, this image right here of the sharp comet. We're gonna end up with the image of the sharp stars with the blurry comet. And I'm gonna run that one through Starnet++. And we're gonna have that image without the stars. And so uh, with the kind of blurry comet, and we're gonna switch over to Photoshop. I'm gonna show you what I do. Okay, so here are our three images. We have the stars, we have the starless stars, and we have the comet. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up these two with Photoshop and we are going to get rid of the fuzzy comet. So here's one image, here's two image. I'm gonna take the uh, image that I have right here of the um, starless and I'm, of uh, the stars, and I'm gonna layer this one on top. So I'm gonna go uh, uh, image, select all. I'm gonna go command C. I'm gonna copy it over here. So now we have two layers, the layer one with the stars and the one with the fuzzy one without it. And then I am going to go image. I'm gonna go down to apply image. Once I'm in apply image, we wanna switch blending to 
subtract, which is near the bottom of the list. And instead of merged in layer right here, we're going to look at layer one. That didn't work. We're going to look at the back. We're going to look at the background. And there it is. It's going to merge the two of them. And I'm going to click OK. And boom, there it is. There is our star field without the fuzzy comet. So that's really good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the uh, image of the blurry, oh, sorry, of the sharp comet. There it is. Okay, it says that to me, and I'm going to open up this one also with Photoshop. So there it is in Photoshop, really nice and happy. And we are going to take this initial star layer from the last one that we did. And again, we're going to go select all, command C, and then command V to paste it on top. Now, how do we merge the two? This is the fun part. So we are going to go to at the very top layer. And then we're going to go down to layer style and the style that we want is blending options. Our blend mode is going to be right here, linear dodge ADD and I'm click okay. And we're done. There it is. There's your comment with your star field. Uh, not too hard. And then what you can do is you can save it uh, and take it into Lightroom and crop it, which is exactly what I'm going to do. And if you want to play with it a little bit, we're just going to call this one, um, uh, stars and comet and I'm going to save it and take it into Lightroom and do a little crop and you should end up with an image that you like. I kind of like turning it on its side. I think it looks really good like this and that is how I processed the comet. Hope that made sense and uh, thank you very much for watching.